welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. He's Andy Walker. And he's Sean Carruthers. And, you know, I think, you know, we were in a roll here. We're making some good shows, and all of a sudden, all of our friends showed up. And so now we have a bit of, like, stage fright. I don't know what to, we're talking about. What's, what are we going to talk about, man? What are we talking about, guys? Browsers. Browsers. Great. Thanks, Matt. Browsers, thanks. Right. A very good topic. We get a lot of questions about which internet browser should I use when I surf the web. Um, and it's a reasonable question. In my book, The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security, Spam, Spyware, and Viruses, I talk entirely about browsers in one of the chapters. Really? <laughs> and that's because uh, browsers, of course, are a source of viruses, spyware, traditionally, you know, on XP. Yes. So way back in the day, Microsoft makes a browser, um, and they didn't take into consideration, uh, they, they developed a very cool technology called ActiveX. Mm -hmm. But uh, wait a second, we should actually go to the people that pay our bills first and come back and talk about yeah, this in was, a minute. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, this, uh, th this is the meat. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about this in a bit. <laughs> right. Okay. S stay for this message when we come back. Browser security and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Are we going to talk about your book again? Yes. <sighs> If a gorilla was the new Camtasia Studio 5, it would be leaner. It would be meaner. And it wouldn't steal your bananas. The new Camtasia Studio 5. Screencasting software that's better than a gorilla. Well, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the people that pay our bills. Darn them! <laughs> ActiveX technology. So, so Internet Explorer uses a technology called ActiveX. It's developed by Microsoft, and it's designed really to make the browsing experience on the Internet much more robust, mm -hmm. much more feature-rich. It kind of extended what browsers could do, what you could see mm -hmm. inside of your browser. Here's the bad news, though. What happened was ActiveX was harnessed by the malware writers, the people that write the viruses and the spyware and stuff like that to actually download in behind the scenes nasty pieces of code. Mm -hmm. So when XP was in its full glory and they were running Internet Explorer 6 and ActiveX was relatively new technology, all the bad guys took advantage of this technology and the part of the reason why XP was so polluted by nasty pieces of code was because of this loophole. Mm -hmm. Well, essentially it was taking the browser, which was a separate piece of software mm -hmm. and giving it access to other parts of the Windows experience That's right. in order to allow things to change, in, change hands, allow you to tap into Excel, to tap into other things. Right. It had full, full privileges on your desktop, mm -hmm. so it was allowed to install anything it liked, right? Yeah. And that's not so good. No, especially when you've got someone who's trying to install something that shouldn't be installed. Right. It's really good in an ideal world where everyone has your best interests at heart. That's true. But uh, unfortunately, in the uh, mass market world of the consumer internet, not so much. Not so much at all. Sadly. So, uh, so ActiveX became actually a real problem. And um, if you didn't have the right protections uh, built into your system, you're going to be rife with uh, infections, and that wasn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, brilliant as they are, uh, the folks at Netscape decided to turn uh, the Netscape code. It was acquired by AOL, and it was spun off in a foundation called Mozilla to create a new browser called Firefox, mm -hmm. which was designed to kind of undercut Microsoft by removing the ActiveX problem and, of course, making the browser experience much more robust. Yeah, and uh, one of the other things is it was designed to have stricter adherence to W3 standards, which is actual HTML code that's designed to make pages display the way they are. W3 is? Uh, the World, World Wide Web, Web Consortium. Consortium, yeah. right. So, so basically the, the guys that kind of engineered the standards mm -hmm. around uh, the coding uh, web standards. Right. For the longest time, uh, because Internet Explorer came out of Microsoft's labs, and it would display things that weren't necessarily correct, according to the W3 specs. Well, it was kind of Microsoft's way of kind of getting their way in the web yeah. world, right? Because they so, had the leading browser. Yeah. So in other words, people could write some very sloppy code. Mm -hmm. And it would display properly in IE, but in other browsers, not so well. Not so much, yeah. And uh, Mozilla's, their goal was to be compliant as right. well. So I, know I, I highly recommend that you uh, check out Firefox. This is, I have it off my screen right now. One, I think it's probably the best browser on the market mm -hmm. today. It's very secure because it doesn't have Active, uh, ActiveX in it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, I don't know, just a beautiful piece of programming, I think. They've done a really nice job. Right now they're in version 2. 
in future, uh, version three is around the corner, and of course, it'll continue to evolve. Uh, although Matt, who's here in the studio today, said that you've tried the beta of 3 and it ain't so hot. Yeah, obviously it's not ready to switch over yet as your permanent default browser. A little bit of problems with it personally, but... Uh, yeah. Well, one of the problems, I guess, that's the thing with beta software, is it's beta for a reason. It's not ready to go. You can It, it fixes some small problems. Uh, I guess Firefox 2 users have had problems with their keyboard suddenly not working in it until you restart the browser. I've had that. Matt's had that before, and that's mm -hmm. solved. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the extensions that you put into Firefox, little bits of code that allow it to do other things, like an FTP server, or just various other applications that will work inside the browser now, a lot of those don't work anymore because of uh, the different code in right. the Firefox version 3. That, I said, that, that said, we highly recommend that you actually try this browser if you don't already. Mm -hmm. it, it improves your security experience, especially on XP, almost immediately. Mm -hmm. One of the things, though, I do want to mention is that since Windows Vista came out, that uh, Microsoft has released a new version of its Internet Explorer browser. It still has ActiveX controls in it. Mm -hmm. However, they've done a really nice job of tightening up all those loopholes. Mm -hmm. So it actually, in fact, I think even Leo, Leo Laporte, has been saying, yeah, IE7 is not so bad now. It's not so bad. Some people have been recommending going over to IE7 now because, again, it's the standard. People seem to code for IE mm -hmm. rather than for Firefox, so more stuff will work in it. And this is one of the big problems in this whole browser battle that we're talking about here. We can say, go to Firefox, but inevitably you're going to run across some sites that just don't work in Firefox. For example, your Windows Update, mm -hmm. it's not going to work in Firefox mm -hmm. without a couple tweaks. Mm -hmm. um, your bank may not work in Firefox. Mm -hmm. So you may have to still continue to use IE, but... Well, that's the op yeah. optimal configuration for any, any Windows machine these days would be, you know, IE is not going to go where you're not going to uninstall it. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep Firefox your main browsing. And, but you know, occasionally it won't. You know, Windows Update will not work, so you have to flip over to IE again. Yeah. It doesn't have to be your primary browser experience, though. Yeah. Now, I do want to show you one thing, especially on Windows Vista, something about IE. It's something called protected mode. Now, protected mm -hmm. mode is a technology designed to diminish the uh, the permissions of anything out there on the internet from doing anything nasty on your system. So this is one of the things they put into IE seven that for is Vista specifically. Vista. So this is not available for the XP version. But I want to, I'm going to point to it right down here. You can see at the bottom here it says protected mode, it's on. Mm -hmm. And all that does is it basically means this protection piece of technology is enabled here. Mm -hmm. The only problem is when a, an act, a legitimate ActiveX control uh, comes along and tries to activate, this will stop it as well. Mm -hmm. So it actually will sometimes stop legitimate uses of ActiveX. So here's a little trick. I'm going to go all the way up to tools here. Make sure you turn the menu bar on. That's the traditional... Uh, uh, classic menus across the top. Then you go to Tools, and then go to Internet Options, and you're going to go over to the the brand new Security tab, mm -hmm. and at the bottom here you'll see it says Enable Protected Mode requires restarting IE. So now that's checked, meaning that it's on right now. But if you're having problem running running an, an Active X control, you're not having the experience that you want on IE seven for Vista. Mm -hmm. You can turn that off, uncheck it, like that. Click OK, and you're going to have to kill off IE and restart it and it'll then restart without protected mode being on. Then you can run it, the experience, no don't problem. Do it, don't do it. No, 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 you, you can do it. But then the idea is once you've done that, you want to go back and turn it back on afterwards. Yeah, don't forget. No. Now, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now who are going, but wait a second, Andy, <clears throat> wait a second, Sean. How about opera? Oh! <laughs> no, Sean, please don't sing. No, opera is a uh, browser developed from, I don't know, a company called Opera, opera. Out. And uh, it's, an, it's, a third, it's a second alternative. Mm. Yeah, they've been working away in the background for quite some time. They've never really gotten a huge share on the desktop. They have gotten a lot more share on handheld devices. So if you mm. see a smartphone, especially one from the Scandinavian countries, chances are it'll have Opera built into it. Like a mobile Also browser. very popular in the world of Linux as well. They've right. uh, been really dedicated to that. So Opera. Opera.com for, opera for the desktop. Check it out. You might, might like it better than Firefox. Personally, I don't. I think it's. I mean, it's a fine browser, mm -hmm. but I love Firefox. I'm so in love with it. It's actually slightly perverted. Yeah, there are other alternatives as well, of course. So there's uh, mm -hmm. Apple's Safari. brought Safari to the the Windows desktop. Not really a success. Safari on the Mac has been very good, but you know when they ported it over to Windows, it suffered from a lot of the same problems that other applications suffer from on Windows, and that's security issues and bugs and all of that stuff. Right. There you go. All right, that's browsers. Browser security is a quick overview for those of you who haven't already adopted a lot of these practices. Some of the advanced geeks, of course, already know this stuff, right? Yes. But we offer it up because some guys out there, you know, just want to learn. All right, well, uh, let's take a break again. 
And when we come back, we have pictures. Do we not have pictures? We have pictures. Is it picture time? Picture it's time. It's picture time. Yeah. Should I do opera? Wait, no, no. Picture time! It's pic... Let's just go to break. <laughs> After this. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, during the break, Sean's like, you know what, we should really talk a bit more about IE7 because it's a pretty good browser relative to what it was. Yeah, because we've been telling people who've been asking us, don't use IE, don't use IE, use Firefox, it's more secure, you'll solve a lot of your problems by not using IE anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily fair anymore. Right. I mean, th with something that's bolted into the operating system like IE is and has been, there's always that risk that it will cross over and do that. But with the move to Vista, uh, Microsoft has really made a lot of progress in security and, and you know, mm -hmm. with user access control and uh, all of the other security features that they've added in, right. especially the protected mode, yeah. it's not necessarily as big a risk as it used right. to be. And we should mention the anti-phishing filter. Mm -hmm. There's a new anti-phishing filter. So phishing, of course, is where somebody pretends to be your bank or a financial institution or something like that and says, yeah. hey, you've forgotten your password. Please remind us what that is or your account number or whatever. And then they, go and they send you to a site that looks mm -hmm. like your bank or your financial institution. Mm -hmm. You type it in thinking you're doing them a favor and somebody steals everything in your bank account. So mm -hmm. um, they've, Microsoft has integrated anti-phishing tools inside of uh, Windows Mail on Windows Vista, mm -hmm. which is the replacement for Outlook Express and uh, corresponds with Internet Explorer 7. So what happens mm -hmm. when you get this email, it says, first of all, it says, mm, this is not good. And mm -hmm. if you do click on a link in one of those emails, you will be taken to IE and it will give you an alert and says, whoa, wait a second, this is not a good site. So really good protection there. Um, and besides that, I want to point to one other thing. I'm going to go back into the tools menu here and down mm -hmm. to internet options. And I want to show you, first of all, in the privacy window here, and this has been around before, but there's a pop-up locker, which is always good. So Yay! You can turn that on. Uh, the security tab has I increased levels of um, um, uh, intensity for your security mm -hmm. as well. And we recommend, in fact, the default setting is medium-high. You want to stay there. Mm -hmm. And you can go all the way up to high, which will mm -hmm. make your experience very bad, and all the way down to medium. Actually, there's no low, interestingly enough. It's <laughs> sort of like, you know, coffee. You can have a medium coffee, a large coffee, or an extra large coffee. You can have a small anymore. There's no such thing no as a small. small so. One thing I do want to mention about, you mentioned pop-up blocker really mm -hmm. briefly, and that's one frustrating thing about moving to IE7 for a lot of people is if they don't know that it's on, you might miss that tiny little bar across the top of your screen, a little yellow bar that says, something has been blocked. Do you want to unblock it? So a lot of people are just sitting there clicking on it, wondering, where's my content? Mm -hmm. I'm clicking, nothing's happening. So just pay attention to that bar between the... Uh, between the actual content and your uh, your toolbars the navigation bar, up yeah. there, okay, very good. And uh, if there's something there, check it out. That's where you're. Now you have a on. plea. I have a plea. I have a plea. Plea. Right. We were talking about uh, sites that don't work in uh, Opera and don't work in Firefox, Firefox yeah. because they're coded for IE. If you're out there and you're designing the web uh, pages for your site, please, please make them compliant. There's no reason in this day and age not to do that. Now, there is actually a, a compliancy program or mm -hmm. a, a tool at, uh, I think it's www.w3c.org. Check that out. We'll put that in the lower third here. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a good way. To, you can actually run your site or your new code through that to make sure it is compliant with W3C mm -hmm. because then it'll work in all the browsers. Right. So people are, are I think they're using IE because they're used to it for uh, a lot of, I mean, and right in. If there is a legitimate reason that you're doing this only for IE and not allowing people that are on Macs to use your code, there's a few places I've gone that I've tried to, you know, pay my bill for, for my phone, and it's just telling me, oh, you can't use this browser, hmm. and you know, I'm on, I'm on a Mac. I can't use your stinky IE browser to, to pay my bill because I don't have it. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, essentially, what you're doing, especially with with Mac taking over some, you know, a, additional share in the market space, hmm. and I mean, you know, whether you agree with Mac versus PC or not, it's it's happening. So, you know, cutting off that amount of people from access to your site at all is just dumb. It, it doesn't matter, you know, whether you think it should be de designed in IE because you like it, you're just 
preventing people from accessing it and just saying, well, you got to go out and buy a PC to use our site. It's not customer friendly. It's dumb. This bellyache about, about uh, Apple technology brought to you by Steve Jobs. <laughs> or Linux. If you're on Linux, Linux do you have yeah. IE? You can't use it. So anyways. Got it. All right. So go to Flash. Go to other things that replicate that content that are cross-platform, please. Are you going to sing the uh, picture time theme now in Opera? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to see some pictures, though. We are going to see some pictures. All right. So we have Dayron from South Florida. I think he's from Fort Lauderdale. Mm. He has just graduated from Lab Rats University. Very good. Your dip diploma <laughs> and pin is in the mail. There you go. Very good. So thank you for sending that in. What's his name? Darren. Darren? Darren? Darren, maybe? Darren. I don't know. Darren. Darren sounds D like a chemical or something. Oh, yeah, or some sort of um, synthetic fiber. I don't know. <laughs> so right. anyways. Thank you, Darren. Darren, Darren. Daronian. Daron. Whatever. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for graduating, Lab Rats University. Right. Uh, and Paul sent in uh, actually a couple pictures. Yes. This is his cat, Pepper, uh -huh. next to his Dell machine, which is running stinky old Windows. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe Linux, perhaps. Who knows? What's the cat's name? The cat's name is Pepper. Pepper and, uh, or... Pepper and uh, Paul live in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Yay. Okay. And uh, Paul also has two dogs. And this is... Pocono or Pocono and Buck. I'm just doing bad on pronunciation. Today. I don't know. Just maybe send me the, the symbols. Pocono. Pocono. Pocono and Buck. Pocono and Buck. All right. So let's say okay. that. All right. Very good. And they're also in Waka Foresta, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Or Wake Forest, North Carolina. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you for sending in our, your pictures of your pets. We love to see them. Thank you for sending in pictures of you and your graduation outfit. And um, you can always send your pictures to us at feedback at labrads.tv. Attachment, attach those pictures. Not too big, not too small, just right. Just like the Three Bears story. Yes. All right. Anything else to add, Mr. Carruthers? You want to plug my book? No. No. <laughs> Come on. Do you want to plug your book? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I have a brand new book out. It's called Windows Vista Help Desk at mm -hmm. your local Amazon or chapters or Barnes and Noble or wherever you buy fine quality technology books. I'm getting the <laughs> sign for wrap it up, pal. All right, that's it for us. Thank you for downloading. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Are you ready? My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is Lab Rats, your favorite podcast. Technology made simple and... My slight. favorite. And cheesy and humorous and, and let's slight. start again. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>